In this tutorial, we will be looking at how to use Canvas Gradebook and SpeedGrader. We will learn how to mark up assignments in SpeedGrader, manage the gradebook, filter grades and modules. We will learn how to weigh grades, how to import and export an Excel spreadsheet from Gradebook, and we'll look at what students see in their gradebook. We'll learn how to build assignments which actually build the gradebook. We'll look closely at assignment groups and what that means and how to develop weighted grades. We'll also look at how we're going to view the gradebook by filtering the gradebook. We'll also look at exporting CSV files from your gradebook. This works well when making your final grades that you will post in my Mercer. From a Canvas course, we're going to go to our gradebook and we're going to set up our weighted grades. And the way we're going to do this is by creating assignment groups. So you'll notice now when we look at our gradebook, it's completely empty. So we're going to build this gradebook out, first putting our uh, weighted grades using assignment groups. And then we're going to come back and build a couple of assignments so that you'll understand how you actually build a gradebook. I will now click on assignments for my navigation. You'll notice by default there's an assignment group called assignment. I'm going to click on the plus group button. And usually you'll know your assignment groups based on your syllabus from your different categories such as quizzes, essays, or, or discussions, or what have you, which make that 100% of your final grade. So I'm just going to make a few assignment groups real quick. First one's going to be quiz. I'm not going to put my total grade in percentage-wise for that yet. I'll come back and do that in just a moment. I'll add another group. This will be for essays. I'll add another one for discussions. I will add one more for uh, group assignments. I'm actually going to delete the one that says assignments because that does not reflect what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that assignment group. I will come back and add one more assignment group for extra credit. Now I'm going to give weight to these categories or these assignment groups. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the three dots next to assignment. And I'm going to click the button or the link that says assignment group weights. Now I'm going to give percentages. So I'm going to give 30% for quizzes. We'll give 25% uh, for essays. And you'll notice down at the bottom, we have our percentages building up. I will give our discussions 30%. I now have 15% left over, so that's uh, I'm going to assign group assignments. But of course, as I said, you probably already have these calculations figured out in your syllabus. I'm not going to give any percentage weight to the extra credit. If I do, it could go one way or the other for the student, meaning if I give a percentage of maybe 5% for extra credit, that will factor into the uh, total score, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and you will now see all the assignment weights listed on the right-hand side here, and we can jump back over into our gradebook, and now you will see all of our group assignment weighting. So you'll see the percentages that we gave each of these categories. And you'll notice that I can't uh, add a grade to assignment at groups because the only way I can add an assignment group grade is to actually add an, a grade for the assignment that's associated with that group. We'll look at that as we start to develop our course. 
Now we are going to create an assignment. Click on Assignments from the navigation in the course and click the plus assignment. In this assignment, we're going to call it Essay 1. And we're going to provide points. Uh, we're going to provide 100 points for this. It is important that when creating assignments that are in an assignment group, that each of those assignments in that assignment group have equal points. Meaning that if I give this assignment 100 points and I give another assignment that's in that same group category 50 points, they will weigh against each other in a different way. Our next area is assignment group. So I'm going to make sure that this is in the essays assignment group. So this is based on the assignment groups that we created earlier. We're going to say that this is worth 100 points and the score based on all the assignments together will provide their weighted score. We are going to have them turn this online and we're going to have a file upload. We did say that we wanted a .docx. We can refine that down to a .docx file, but I'm gonna leave that unchecked. I am going to limit this to two attempts and I am going to going to apply turn it in and I'm just going to assign this to everyone if I want to assign this to uh, an individual past the due date I will not d uh, replace everyone but I actually will add that person but I'm going to go ahead and give a due date And you can assign grades based on their due dates. And if someone turns something in late, it will reduce that by a certain percentage. We'll look at that a little bit later, how to set that up. Now, when we return back to our grade book, we will see that we now have an assignment. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to give this an assignment a grade. Later we'll be looking at speed grader, but I just want to show you how to go ahead and enter a grade manually, and also that will reflect in their total score. So you will now see that the essay category or assignment group has 95, and their final grade is 95, based on this one grade. Now if, for example, a student did not turn in a quiz and received a zero in this area, this grade will be reflective of those two grades together. Currently, we only have one grade. Sometimes people have asked, how do I uh, remove a column from the grade book? The only real way to delete an assignment from the grade book is to actually delete the assignment. So from the list of my assignments, I will need to find the assignment and delete the assignment. This is the only way that I can remove an assignment from the gradebook. The gradebook offers several ways to find grades and view grades. For example, if we click on the gradebook link, we can switch from the gradebook view to individual view. The individual view will allow us to select a particular student and to view that student in the class. When we select a student, we will now be able to view their grades in their grade book. This is a good way to review the grades with a student when you don't want them to see the entire grade book but you want to be able to look at their particular scores. Once you click on the name, you will be able to see all their scores and assignments that are missing. When we go back to the grades, we can go back to the gradebook view 
And then we can also look at the grade book history. When we look at grade book history, we can see who has accessed the grade book and looked at their grades. We'll also see the assignments and, and so forth. So this is a good way to see if a students are, are looking at their grades, when something was graded, and by who. Now we're going to look at the view drop-down options. We can arrange our list in several various ways. For example, if we want to look at our modules, we can change our view in which will show the modules uh, that we want to see. Or if we want to have the due dates um, arrange in that manner, then we can choose that view option. We can also filter. Um, this particular course, I have two sections. So I have currently my sections uh, check marked. That means I can go over to my choices and I can choose uh, section two or section three. And this can be a very good advantage to course making your final grades but it also helps you to uh, grade those particular sections uh, at a time or, or view them as needed. We can also choose a, another option for example um, modules so we can go in here and we can look at a particular module uh, if I want to choose a particular module I can click and it'll show that particular module um, we have one other option here, assignment groups. This means that if we want to see all quizzes or, or what have you, we can, we can go and look at that information. So if we want to just look at quizzes, uh, we, can, we can view that from the choices available. The other option available is status. And this allows us to go in and change our color coding for the particular status that will be shown up on the page. So if, for example, if something's missing or if something's late or they've resubmitted, we can have specific color coding that goes along with those options. Uh, we will scroll down and let's look and see if there is something missing here. So for example, We'll notice that our uh, color coding is blue. This, as it's stated here in our statuses, shows us that that particular assignment is late. And we'll see another one that is missing. Um, so if they resubmit, it'll show up in, in the particular color that you choose, or by default, in a green color. We also have a couple other options. We can go to our columns and check our notes or our unpublished items. If you don't want to see your unpublished items, you can of course uncheck that and you won't see those in your gradebook. The next item over are actions. Essentially our actions allow us to import and export a CSV file from or to our gradebook. When you click export, it will export your gradebook in a CSV file, which can then be opened in Excel. And you can manage your Excel spreadsheet as needed. For example, you can delete particular columns uh, that are not needed or what have you. This works well when making your final grades. We're now going to look at grade policies. If we click on the cogwheel, we will notice that we can set up parameters for late policies. We can drop or give a grade of zero right away for um, grades that are missing past the particular due date. This is why it's good to set up due dates because you can set up these parameters. You can also deduct um, a certain percentage based on the amount of time or, or what have you, for example, we can uh, subtract 5% for each day that the assignment is past due. We have further grading policies here, which we can set up the parameter to hide grades or what have you, which will 
um, not allow the students to see these grades unless until they are uh, already posted. And then we have our final tab, which allows final grade override. Um, right now, you'll see that I don't have a final grade override in my grade book, but I'm going to select this tab and check mark allow final grade override. We will now notice that our grade book has an additional column. For example, if I wanted to bump this student's grade up from a B plus or to an A, I could either enter a number, which will convert it into a letter, or I can just for simply put, put the letter grade uh, automatically. The way that we get these letter grades to show up in our total column is to go to our course settings. We're going to go to the link in our course for settings, and we will make sure that we enable course grade scheme. We can use the default grading scheme, or we can simply click the pencil, which will allow us to go in and change the parameters uh, as we see here, we can change those parameters for our grading scheme. We will now be looking at SpeedGrader and how to mark up and grade student submissions within SpeedGrader. First, we're going to go to our gradebook and we're going to click on a student submission and then click the arrow next to the possible score you will have a right hand dialog box which allows you to choose speed grader. If we want to go back to our gradebook, we simply click the icon for the gradebook, taking us back into the gradebook. Another way to get to speed grader is to click on the assignment link from the gradebook, and on the right hand side, you will see a link for speed grader. Once you're inside speed grader, you can select through the student submissions and then make the appropriate markup as needed. We're now going to look at some of the tools within speed grader. Our first tool is the point annotation icon, which allows us to choose different colors if we want. We're now able to add a comment, and we can easily delete this if we do not want it to be available. We can either just delete the content or the comment and go back in and add another comment if we wish, or we can just delete the whole comment and annotation altogether by clicking the trash can icon. Our next item over for our tool set is the highlight tool, which allows us to come in and highlight an area. And then we're also able to give comments as needed on this highlighted area. I'm just adding some comments just to show you how it works. We now have our next tool, which is the text tool. Essentially, this just allows us to click anywhere on the document and begin to type some uh, text. Our next tool over is our strike through tool, which allows us to go over some text and add a strikeout. We can add comments to these items as well. And our next tool, which is a very good tool, is the uh, line tool. This allows us to change our colors, come over and highlight an area, and then we can still add comments to these uh, areas that we either um, draw a circle on or a line across, or you can strike something out, whatever you need to do. This is just like using your pen with a document that you've downloaded. Our next tool over is the uh, selection tool, which allows us to select over a certain area and then we can add comments to those bigger blocks of text. On the right hand side over here uh, in our speed grader, we can add points to the speed grader by 
entering the score. And then we can add overall comments. You can also download the submission and then upload the sub So if, for example, if we click the download, this will download the student's submission and then we can re-upload it by clicking on the uh, attachment file and attach that uh, file back into our assignment. Currently, this item is hidden from the students because I'm selected to uh, hide the grades. And once I've made all my grades for this particular assignment, I can click on the icon to post the grades uh, as needed. Canvas SpeedGrader is a great tool for adding comments, markup, and grading your students' submissions. Canvas Gradebook allows you to keep track of your student grades and allows your students to also know where they stand in your course. Thank you and good luck using Canvas for your course.